Death Blade here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ. Let's get right into the topic. I'm talking about a term in Chinese that gets translated in a variety of ways. I have seen fire deviation, I have seen qi deviation, and I personally sometimes translate it as cultivation deviation. I'll get into a little bit about that in a moment. Similar to the recent video I did about Jianghu, I kind of like to avoid videos that you can find out information about just by simply Googling. So whether it's that video of the Jianghu, whether it's the five elements, whether it's yin and yang, the things that you can find out information on your own audience, I would prefer that you do that because I think it's kind of silly for me to just basically be like reading a Wikipedia page. If you disagree with that and you would like me to do some videos on things like five phases or yin and yang, stuff that information is readily available about but maybe you don't feel like going to the time doing that research, I guess I could consider that. I would like to hear your opinion in the comments below about that. So let's get started on this topic, which is I'm going to refer to it as, I'm going to refer to it in the Chinese for this entire video. Now in Chinese it is zhou huo ru mo. So whether you're doing qi cultivation, fire deviation, cultivation deviation, or however else you want to translate it, in Chinese it is zhou huo ru mo. Now what do those different characters break down into? First of all is zhou and huo. Zhou means to go. Uh, it's like an action verb, and huo means fire. Then you have the second two terms, which is ru mo. Ru means to enter, and then mo means a devil. Or you, you know, the subject of how to translate mo can be kind of complicated. I have a whole video about that. Check it out if you haven't already. So what does go, fire, enter, devil mean? Well, first of all, actually these two terms are separate and unique and can be used by themselves. So you can have ru mo and you can have zhou huo, both by themselves. Now, zhou huo basically means to do something unintentionally, to make a mistake, to slip up, or to misfire. Based on my research, and I, I, I did some research, and my wife, Madam Deathway, did some research, unfortunately, it's not as easy to find information about et the etymology or the origin of words, or specifically the origin of Chinese characters and words. It's not as easy to do that in English. When I do research about this stuff in English, you can just go to almost any website that deals definitions of words and it'll tell you the origin whether it's latin or french and when it appeared in the english language first and how old it is and all the meanings and stuff it's not as easy to do that in chinese but based on the research we did it seems to me that the origin of zhouhua has to do with early rudimentary firearm weapons so believe it or not the Chinese had firearm weapons a really long time ago. I think probably most people know that gunpowder was invented in China. And contrary to popular belief, it wasn't just used for fireworks, no. There were firearm weapons going way, way back in, in Chinese history. And the term zhouhuo, or go fire, has to do with essentially not paying attention to the fire that would be used as the igniter and then accidentally discharging a firearm weapon. Now, I cannot say with 100% certainty that that's the origin. All of the sources we found said that that's the origin of the word. Again, I'm not a scholar, I'm not an expert, but that's what the research for us said. And based on my understanding, that is the definition that is part of the set term Zoho Rumo. So in other words, it originally comes from misfiring a weapon based on the misuse of the fire. Okay, Rumo literally would involve a devil or some kind of spirit entering you and causing problems for you, taking over. The term itself can also generally be used to mean to feel confused, befuddled, spellbound, infatuated, or even be deviled, as in the devil is in you. As to at what point in history these two different terms were linked together to form the Zouhua Rumwa uh, deviation thing, or whether it started out that way and then they split apart and were used separately, which I highly doubt. I'm sorry I couldn't find any information about that. I really wish I could say, and this first appeared in Chinese literature at this point and blah blah blah. But I'm sure that information exists out there somewhere, I just wasn't able to get it. What does it mean? Well, it is basically a Taoist term that refers to essentially making some kind of mistake in specifically your meditation, but it by extension could be your martial arts uh, practice, and making some kind of mistake that causes some sort of catastrophic failure, and then you end up having a major problem as a result, which could be an injury, mental or physical. And again, this is a real life term that people who practice cultivation or who practice meditation might actually be concerned about, even in modern times. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up the definition from my dictionary app. So I use an app that has something like 20 or 30 dictionaries, and I use this for my translating work. It has some good definitions. I'm just going to scroll through them and read them so you can see what the dictionary says about it. So we have spellbound, absorbed in, utterly devoted to, and you can see the example sentence, 
He has recently become addicted to computer games. So again, this is a term that is actually relatively common outside of the sort of metaphysical, I don't know if that's the right word, outside of the like martial arts meditation thing. It can just be used in normal conversation to essentially mean that somebody is befuddled or super interested in something when they shouldn't be. Going down, continuing to the list, to be obsessed with, to go overboard in Buddhism and Taoism, to misguidedly focus on hallucinations that arise during meditation, continuing on, be obsessed with, possessed by the devil, and here's a really good one. It says pejorative, become obsessed with a pursuit like practicing Qigong, and then another one about hallucinations. So I think you can see from there the common usage and the usage within Taoism, Buddhism, and meditation and martial arts. As for how it is used in the fantasy novels, whether that's wuxia, xian xiao, or xuan huan, it essentially means that, but it has taken on, in my experience, a little bit of a broader usage. It basically refers to anything that you do incorrectly while practicing your cultivation or your meditation or your martial arts that then leads to a catastrophic problem. It could even be death. I see this all the time, especially when the cultivation novels reach these high levels of immortals and stuff. They'll often say things like, oh, you better be careful or you're going to zohua rumwa and then you will explode or you will disintegrate or something like that. This is one of those terms that, as I've mentioned in many other videos in the past, the authors can use in whatever way they want. It is a really common thing. I would say it comes up probably in every single uh, Chinese fantasy novel. Okay, I I, maybe I should walk that back. I, again, haven't done a scientific study to determine if that is true, but basically I think it comes up all the time, not necessarily as something happening, but something that gets mentioned. All the time the master will tell the apprentice or the disciple will tell another disciple, you have to be careful, otherwise you're going to zhou huo ru mo. Now, why is it translated in those different ways? Well, first of all, fire deviation. I think this is probably the earliest one. I'm not 100% certain, but I saw it originally in old Kung Fu and Wuxia movies and I think it became an accepted way to translate it in the movies. Because of that, fire deviation entered the general lexicon of sort of wuxia terminology a really, really long time ago, probably at least 30 years ago, if not more. For instance, uh, there's a game called Shadow Fist, which is based on Hong Kong action movies and Chinese wuxia and kung fu movies. It's kind of an old game. I think it's still around. Uh, they had a card for fire deviation. And I saw it in all sorts of movies. And the reason for using fire is because it has Hua, the character for fire in it. And in terms of deviation, I think the original intent was that they were thinking that the energy uh, experienced some sort of malfunction. So I don't think I mentioned that. Sorry, I meant to mention that, my bad. Uh, part of the original definition in terms of the making a mistake during meditating would involve improper flow of energy or qi in the body that would lead to those catastrophic results. For qi deviation, I think this came around later when translators in the past maybe few years, like four or five years, who were translating Chinese fantasy novels online or were doing subtitles for TV shows came across fire deviation and they were like, what does that mean? Or maybe they thought it doesn't really make sense, especially um, as a brand new term, people who aren't familiar with it. That's what I thought when I came across it in I Shall Seal the Heavens. I thought fire deviation, I really like it. It sounds cool, but it just doesn't really work or nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. And so the deviation part does seem to work well. And so I think a lot of translators said, well, hey, basically Zohua Rumo is when the qi flow is improper or incorrect because you're not paying attention or you make a mistake. So let's just call it qi deviation. For me, I came up with cultivation deviation basically for the same thing, except that in my mind, I was thinking all of the characters in these novels are practicing cultivation. So I figured cultivation and deviation kind of would intuitively make sense. And so that's how I've taken to translating it. I'm curious if you are a fan of this content, whether you're a translator or not, do you have other ideas for how to translate Zohua Rumo? I'm curious to hear about that. Have you uh, seen it used in different ways? What are your thoughts? Uh, do you have any scenes that you remember from the novels that make you think of this, where this happened? One final thing I want to mention, I saved this for the last part of the video because I didn't want to, you know, uh, self-promote too much, but I have this game coming out that I've talked about a lot called Righteous Blood, Ruthless Blades, coming out as of the filming of this video in a couple months. And we actually included an entire mechanic for a fire deviation in that game. Because the game is inspired by the works primarily of Gulong, but other classic Wuxia writers, and the movies that were made from their novels, we decided to go with the translation fire deviation. And we have a whole system that basically emulates kind of everything I've talked about here. As part of this game, you level up, and when you level up, you need to meditate to do that. 
and all the characters have an actual meditation skill. So this is a tabletop role-playing game, not an online role-playing game. It's a tabletop role-playing game. When you qualify to level up, you roll the dice and use your meditation skill to see if you succeed in meditating. The higher level you get, the more of those rolls you have to make. So in other words, you have to meditate for longer and achieve more successes. If you fail a certain number of times in a row, then you experience what we call fire deviation. And then we have a whole bunch of tables where you roll the dice to see what sort of mental and physical things will result because of your fire deviation, or you could call it chi deviation or zohu rumo. So that's it for this topic. I hope this was helpful. Again, I mentioned earlier in the video, I was thinking about I was going back and forth about whether, whether to do this video because you can actually find information about this online. If you Google fire deviation, chi deviation, there's even a pretty complex Wikipedia article about it. I didn't want to make it seem like I was referencing that article, so I didn't read it. I glanced, scanned a little bit, and there are actually other articles besides that Wikipedia article that you can find online that go into more detail about what fire deviation or chi deviation is. Final thing I want to say is I actually saw this trending, not trending, sorry. It wasn't trending, but it was trending in my Twitter feed. Not even, oh, sorry, trending's not the right word. I saw it pop up in my Twitter feed because I checked stuff related to Wuxia and Sanxia. And my understanding is that something about this came up in the really popular cultivation television show called The Untamed. And I saw a lot of buzz about it. And so I finally decided, well, I should probably do a video about it. Anyway, I hope this helps for anybody who is completely unfamiliar with it or who has seen it pop up and wasn't sure what it was. I think I've said one more thing like three or four times already, maybe. One more thing, this video was voted on by patrons over Patreon. Last I checked the poll, it was a tie, so I, I, I actually recorded two videos back to back and I'm gonna save this one for a little bit later. If you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, share, notification bell, all that jazz. And of course, if you're interested in supporting directly, you can check the links in the description below. That's it for this video, I'll see you next time. Galtza.